regenerative endodontics. This topic is one of the new topics. It is defined as biologically based procedures designed to replace damaged structures as the pulp dentine complex. The goal first is to terminate any symptoms of pathology and enhance bone healing around the tooth. Second, lengthen the root height and thicken the root wall dimension. In order to understand the importance of this topic, we can see that in the literature, for example, for example, PubMed, we can see that there are 2,853 articles related to this topic, and mostly it is in the recent years. So this is really the hot spot of endodontics nowadays. The concept here of this topic is to make normal sterile granulation tissue in the root canal space for revascularization that will stimulate undifferentiated mesenchymal cells around the apex of the tooth and cementoblasts, which leads to calcific material formation in the periapical area. The components of regenerative endodontics are stem cells, growth factors, and scaffold, which is extracellular matrix, which keeps the stem cells together. The stem cells, they are undifferentiated cells capable of differentiating into various specialized cell types. They may be pluro, pluripotent and multipotent. Of course, they differ in their source, growth rate, gene expression, and inclination of the cell differentiated. That means many cells differentiate into other cells but other cells may differentiate into other types of cells. The origin of stem cells, first of all, is the dental pulp stem cells. These, when differentiated, they will make pulp-like tissue and bone. For the periodontal ligament stem cells, they, and, and the bone marrow stem cells, they will make fibroblasts, cementoblasts, and osteoblasts. For the stem cells in the epical papilla, that means the immature uh, permanent teeth, they will differentiate into odontoblasts, and adipocytes. And for the stem cells from human exfoliated deciduous teeth, these, te these cells are multipotent. They have got a high proliferation rate. They will proliferate into odontoblasts, adipocytes, neural cells, etc. The growth factors are biologically biological factors regulating the stem cells to form the cell type needed. Promotion of the differentiation of mesenchymal stem cells to odontoblastic like cells. These are the growth factors that affect the stem cells in the dental region. The scaffold here, this is a structure 
providing physiochemical and biological three-dimensional microenvironment for cell adhesion growth, differentiation, and migration. The function is that it supports cell organization and vascularization. It aids cell proliferation and differentiation. It contains nutrients for better and faster tissue development. Classification. We've got many types of scaffold. It may be natural as collagen, platelet-rich plasma, fibrin, and glycose amino glycan. Or it may be synthetic, like polyactic acid, and etc. Revascularization. This procedure, it's related to restoring the vascular, uh, vascularity to a tissue or organ. Any vital pulp cell at the apical end of the root canal can proliferate into newly formed matrix and odontoblast. Multipotent dental pulp stem cells from the apical region might be seeded to the existing dentinal wall and differentiate into odontoblasts and then deposit tertiary or atubular dentin. Regener <laughs> regeneration of dentin pulp complex. Here, the strategies for endodontic Regeneration is first regeneration of the entire tooth, which is beyond our scope. B, local regeneration of dentine pulp complex from amputated dental pump, pulp. C, re regeneration of dental pulp from apical dental pulp or periapical tissues. Now, B, it depends on a growth factor, BMP2. This is uh, uh, present in dentin powder that indu induced in the dentinogenesis in dentine cavity with pulp exposure. It makes or it activates pulpal uh, healing to exposed areas. C, which is regeneration of, of dental pulp from apical dental pulp or periapical tissue. Here it begins with the identification of stem cells in the apical region of the developing teeth in which Root formation is incomplete. It's important that we choose incompletely uh, formed teeth because uh, the, the uh, epical end is still open. Mesenchymal stem cells in the epical papilla, they differentiate into odontoblast-like cells that participate in pulp wound healing and regeneration. Bone marrow de derived mesenchymal stem cells has multipotent abilities and undergoes osteogenic differentiation. So in such a case, we will have stem cells regenerating the pulp and at the same time, stem cells in the bone marrow forming bone and cementoblasts around the tooth. Clinical protocol regenerative endodontics. First of all, indications. 
teeth with necrotic pulp and immature epics, these are really indicated for regenerative endodontics. Pulp space is too large and the remaining structure of the tooth is too thin for any restoration later on. So we need to regenerate the root, lengthen it so that it will be strong enough for any restoration in the future. Important tooth as aesthetic or functional concern, for example, maxillary central incisor or loss of many posterior teeth. Role of antibiotic paste. Here, the antibiotic pastes are a combination of more than one antibiotic mixed into paste. The triple antibiotic paste commonly used are ciprofloxacin, metronidazole, and minocycline in a, in a ratio of 1 1 1. In a macro gel propylene glycol vehicle, it should this this paste should remain below the CEJ in a concentration of 0.1 milligram per mil, and then the chamber is sealed so that the antibiotic will sterilize or disinfect the pulp chamber or pulp canal. 